I'm Claire and welcome and today I'm going to show you some hints and tips on how to sew wire into your work. When I do my work people often think oh gosh have you sewn a wire in and is it a bit scary? Uh, so some of my pieces have wire down the middle and some of my pieces have wire around the outside edge. And today I'm going to concentrate on sewing the wire down the middle. Just give you a few hints and tips and uh, help you not make the same mistakes that I did when I first started out and just give you some pointers really as to when to use wire down the middle and when you would use wire down the outside edge. So this hibiscus for example, the petals are quite wide and I have just stitched a wire down the middle and on some of the petals the petals are a bit flexible so if I was going to be uber critical of this, I would say it probably could have done with a wire around the outside edge. Now there are times when I may do a wire around the outside edge and the middle. And what that does is enable you to be quite creative with the shape of the petal. So on this stargazer lily, we've got crinkly edges and we're also able to curl it because I've done the, the wire down the middle. But uh, you can do whatever you like. That's actually on a Waitrose carrier bag so uh, and soluble fabric, so there's nothing to stop you being really creative out there. But I'm going to give you some hints and tips so that you can have a go yourself and it's not so scary. I just wanted to show you close up that Stargazer Lily again so that you could see how I've used the wire down the edge to make it crinkly. So I'm hoping, if I just move my there you can actually see that I've made that crinkly edge and then the wire down the center enables me to curl it and you get lovely curls at the end okay so that's how flexible you can be with your wire and it then just gives the lily structure so this is the leaf that I've actually stitched and what I've made sure that I've done is end up at the end where I want to attach my leaf. So here's my wire with my loop in and I need to position that close enough to the end so that it gives it that support because if you don't do it too close to the end and you end up with it down here you will have what we call a droopy tip be careful how I say that uh, because otherwise you know it, it's not going to be supported with wire so push that up as close to the tip as you can but also remembering that you need to be able to stitch over it in a minute to cover that up so what I then do is to secure it first of all I actually do a few stitches in and out of that loop now don't forget, this is set to free machine embroider. So my teeth are down and I've got this machine embroidery foot on. Now this is a foot 24, which fits a Benina. And I know some of you think, oh, that's a lovely foot, but it, a Benina foot is not gonna fit your machine. So the thing to do is to look at the manufacturer's foot for your model. And there are all sorts of free machine embroidery or free motion quilting feet out there that fit your specific model. So the thing to do is to check with your local dealer and make sure you buy the right foot. Uh, what you're looking for ideally is an open toed one because that will allow us to see where you're where you're going really. So uh, on this Benina it's 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 sort of like a horseshoe and on di different models they may indeed be plastic, they may be metal, they may be a bit more square looking but the thing to do is just check what fits your machine and then uh, you'll get the best foot for the job. So what you want to do is go in and out of that loop a few times. Okay, so I'm literally doing that very gently. Then what I like to do is just go from side to side. I haven't set it to zigzag, so I'm still on straight stitch. The reason it's going from side to side whoops, is because I'm moving it. So I'm literally just doing that. And what that does is it, that covers it up. Now, when you've done that, then set your machine to zigzag. And again, models vary, but you're probably looking at a stitch width of about two. Now, 
the wire, as you can see, is nice and secure and I have smoothed it. It's really important that you smooth it so that it's straight because that will enable you to stitch quite easily. So I've set it to a two and if you keep your wire bang in the middle of those two prongs of your open toed foot, what you should be able to do is zigzag over that quite nicely. Now if I push my hoop slowly through, I will get a satin stitch and that covers my wire completely. Okay. I'm not going too fast. I'm just making sure that my wire lies in the middle. Don't forget your machine is set to zigzag, so that's what's making it hop from side to side. You do, just keep it nice and straight. And the thing is, you can stop at any time. As I say, always, always remember to breathe. Uh, and it's not so scary. I realise that sometimes very focals can be a little bit of a nuisance, so perhaps reading glasses might be good at this point. But just take your time. Now the other thing I said earlier was that if you uh, pushed the work through and didn't have it, um, sorry, if you didn't move your hoop slowly, you, you actually had an open stitch and the colour of the wire shone through. This is the effect you get. So let me just show you. So if I just feed that through like that, so the wire is secure, but you're getting a more open look. You can have a look at that in a minute. There we are. Back to normal, just moving it slowly through. And if you do that, you will not run the risk of clonking your wire. It can be a bit scary. And yes, when I first started out, I used to break a lot of needles. But I've learned from my mistakes because I teach uh, people to, to sew wire in. And we have had very few needle, break, needle breakages. So I think I've learnt my, from my mistakes. And I think when I teach, I share the tips so that you don't break your needle. And look, it just is great. Look how that wire is nicely stitched in there. So I will then just cut away from here and wash that. This soluble fabric will disappear and it will leave me with a nice lacy leaf. If you're wondering what soluble I'm using, this is actually Avalon Plus. It's very similar to Solufleece and it's also the same as Aquatics Aquasol. You don't have to use this soluble. Uh, those of you who know me know that I also like to use Avalon Film. Um, those are my two solubles of choice because when they wash out, they wash out quite easily. But hopefully that gives you food for thought. So here we are. I've washed the piece and I've left a little bit of the residue of the soluble fabric in there so that's giving it a little bit of stiffness and I've also ironed it. You can see you can bend it, it's great. So hopefully you can have the confidence to give that a go and use wire in your work. So there we are, that's how you sew wire into your piece of work. So I hope I've given you some idea on how to do it and given you the confidence to have a go. Uh, I think you'll find it's easier than you think. Just take your time and you'll be absolutely fine. So if you've liked today's video, please give me the thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, just comment down below and I'll get back to you and hopefully be able to answer and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. <laughs>